We did do the we did do the second one. It's a Bible from 1893. This was gifted to me a while back by a sub. It's, fa it's fascinating. More than 50% of this book is commentary, notes, concordances, lexicons, all that. It's awesome. But lately, for the past two days, I've been getting into this. This book is from 1902. Dictionary of Phrase and Fable. It's fantastic. Imagine, imagine a, a 120 year old book, which I have in my hand, original, original from 1902, that talks about even all the ancient folklore and fables and Nordic tales and tales from all around the world, all the mythological texts. And it's a dictionary that basically sums up all the colloquials and fragments and the symbols and their meanings from all these old writings. And this itself is an old book. This is pre, this is before the world wars. These are the types of books I've been telling you guys about. Another, this, is, this, this too is another donation. Fantastic book. Like 1,300 pages. It's, a, it's amazing. It's over 1,300 pages. But I've been lost in that for, for a couple of days. Thank you, Avum. AVM. Scripture. Over and over and over. I've told you guys, and in, in, in when I show you about Yahweh and a demon, and how there are two gods and two godly and divine stories, and two narratives throughout the entire Bible, one is good and one is evil. It started back with the whole Edenic story of a tree of knowledge of good and evil that pre-existed any fall of man. That tree was already there before any human sinned. This double narrative throughout the entire Bible goes from Genesis all the way through the, the scriptures all the way to Revelation. We must use the symbols that are in scripture to decode it. Remember guys, I am 100% a simulationist and in that simulation everything is coding from our DNA to all the ancient texts that we have ever read. Even the syllables you're hearing from my voice right now from my vocal cords are all a part of different layers of holography. It's all coding. And coding can be used to interpret coding all the time. This book is a supernatural book. I have always promoted that about the Bible. But it's a book that contains both good and evil. That's why you have to be very careful about what you invest your, invest your faith in. This book has the great capacity to turn good people into living demons. And this has happened over and over and over when people believing that they're on the holy side have executed and tortured and imprisoned innocent people all in the name of God. It's very easy to fall prey to the idea that divinity is in the text and not in the individual. So that's why we have to, we, we need to use scripture to interpret scripture. So here it is attention to something as in the days of noah this is the vapor canopy world this is after 2040 2040 returns the vapor canopy that i've told you guys about so many times now the lord is the one doing the taking of the people did you get that one will be taken and the other left it is the lord that is coming and taking the people how do we know this because the master of the house is not the lord the master of the house is mentioned in this passage. The master of the house in the other Old, uh, New Testament passages is the God of this world. The architect of the simulacrum. The God of this world is mentioned in New Testament passages as being Satan. The Lord of the principalities of the air. The house is the simulacrum. This construct that we're living in. The master of the house, who has people taken from him, is the adversary, the demiurge, the architect, the Satan. This is what Jesus is saying right here. How do we know this? Because the scriptures and the prophecies say that Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. And this has triggered Christians for years. They don't like their savior being equated to a thief. But this is what is happening. He is coming to take what, what belongs to him. And there's nothing the master of the house can do about it. So, might have that wrong. The spirit of the Lord 
the spirit of the Lord God is upon me to proclaim the liberty of the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. Let me read that again, guys. I need to read that to you again. Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me to proclaim liberty to the captives, the errants, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, the simulacrum to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the return of the chief cornerstone who comes to set the captives free, the stone the builders rejected, and the day of vengeance of our God. It's 13 and a half years before the elite are sealed hermetically in their subterranean facilities where they, they plan out the storm. That's what I believe. So they still have time to do this epic war that they're going to that they're going to to do. And this epic war is going to involve Christianity and Islam in World War III. This is what they're going to set up, and it's going to be doing. They're going to set it up by introducing a messianic hero. This is what we need to watch out for. Somebody is going to be very, very convincing, so convincing that it's actually going to be dangerous to even voice your opinion that he's not who he says he is. And that is something we need to watch out for. So this is what's on the table. This is what's coming. And in order to bring about that whole series of events, the elite are now about to allow basically us to clean house and this isn't just the united states this is all around the world the globe and this is why i'm telling you in my videos over and over and over we have a pre-planned artificial fake apocalypse on the horizon it's several years away but it has to unfold in order for the elite to be able to do their basically their magna their magnum opus we're going to get into that in this video but in second, the globalist power structure, the elitist, the elitist arm, which you, which you call the left, the liberals, the socialist, the closet communist, they're about they're about to fall and lose power. But it's all by design. It's not what you think, guys. There's going to be a lot of happy people about the whole turn of events and series of events, but the it's designed to fool you into thinking that that good is prevailing over evil we were never meant to stay in this world we're never going to defeat this world remember we're pilgrims we're sojourners here all this stuff you're not supposed to get to it get attached to it you got to be like shakespeare i don't mean gay i mean you need to just regard the world as being a stage play an amphitheater all the world's a stage. You can't get emotionally invested in everything going on around because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter. None of it matters. You got to clean your informed field. You got to be anything you want to be, and you. This war will result in a food shortage, not what we're entering in right now. I told you guys in my predictions videos, all this is about to pass, every bit of it. The elite, have, the elite are now about to allow the conservatives to take over so they can enter in what they want to do with the last 17 and a half years before the sixth seal, the, the Phoenix phenomenon. These events must happen in this order for whatever reason. They're scripted. They're all right here in the Bible, but the elite are playing by that script. So... This is not the event we're in. We're going to now. This is a food shortage years from now, but before 2040. And I heard a voice in the midst of the book. Okay, maybe I read that one. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. 
and his name that sat on him was death. This is interesting because there have been many biblical scholars and researchers that have noticed an anomaly in this text. I notice it as well. Because while it's called the four horsemen of the apocalypse, there's a fifth rider. Doesn't say horsemen though. It just says that the fourth one, the fourth seal is the fourth horseman ushering in the apocalypse. But he's followed closely behind by hell. Remember, the identity of all these riders, right, are horsemen. So this is a horseman of well as well. There's a fifth horseman right here. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. That's 25% of the world's population. To kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. This means that there will be a 75% survival rate. That's pretty high. It still means billions of people will lose their life. This is, this is how the apocalypse is ushered in, but it's not the apocalypse yet. By far, the apocalypse has not yet begun. And when, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony that they held. So, and they, cry, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell upon the earth? And white robes were given unto them, unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants, also their brethren, should be killed as they were. So it is fulfilled. This is the first five seals. Remember, in the scriptures, there are prophecies that says that God himself will kill people to keep them from the evil to come. The white robes, I have videos about that too. I, I explained to you guys that the white robes, they are the subject of many different prophetic texts. The white robes are the eternal avatar that you have earned from all your journeys going through all these life sims. When you receive your white robe, it is the avatar that can be used with all the powers that you have accrued through all of your lifetimes living here in the simulacrum or hell. Now, so this pendulum is going to swing and it's by design. And this is what we're going to get to in this video because the template of the future is fixed. The past is a predicate for the future. What has already occurred multiple times will occur again. And the book of Revelation preserves the architecture of the future based off the predicates of the past. It's done this over and over and over. I'm going to show you in this video what the seven seals.